You did this to me! Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at Annabelle Comes Home from 2019. This is the third movie in the Annabelle franchise and it's obviously part of the Conjuring universe as well. And in this movie, we fast forward to 1972 featuring Judy, Ed and Lorraine Warren's daughter. Now this one for me, I was really looking forward to it because Ed and Lorraine play a part in this movie. They don't play a massive part, but they do play a part. And it feels like Annabelle and The Conjuring were coming together, sort of like the Avengers Infinity War or Avengers Endgame. This could be the, the ultimate ending to Annabelle and possibly to Conjuring at this point, of course. So I was really looking forward to it because I thought Annabelle was okay. Annabelle creation was great. And maybe this one could top Annabelle Creation. Something I liked about this one as well, keeping it within the Conjuring series as well, is having Judy as being the main character and setting it in Ed and Lorraine Warren's house. So we know that we're going to see some spooky things because of the basement where they hold all the props there. So we know that there's going to be more at play than just Annabelle. I can't remember the girl's name now. Is it Mackenzie Grace or something? The little girl that plays Judy. I like the recasting of Judy. Um, they had to recast her because it's set before The Conjuring 2. So making her a little bit younger was fine. So they got the girl from Sabrina. She plays the young Sabrina. So she was a great choice to play Judy because she's a really good actress. I think everyone in the film was great. You know, we were introduced to all new characters and unlike some of the movies in the franchise, I could get behind these characters. Not only could I get behind them, I understood their backstories. You've got this girl who her one of her parents is dead and she wants to communicate with them and that's one of the reasons why she comes to the house pretending to be Judy's friend, although she does like Judy in the end. So you get a really fleshed out backstory with some of these characters that you just can't help but like them. One of my biggest issues with Annabelle Comes Home is it felt like a spin-off set up movie for other spin-offs to come out within the Conjuring universe. We've obviously got the basement with all the props down there and when you look at some of the scenes that sometimes it feels like some of the scenes were only set up so that we could see props that were going to be used in future movies. So that might not be the case but that's the way it looked to me. I was thinking to myself they're bringing this movie out, they're showing us some of these props that we'll maybe react to, maybe they'll look online and the audience will say, oh, I really love that woman in the white dress. Oh, I, I really love the monkey. Uh, and if people start talking about it, maybe the producers will go, right, we're going to do a spin-off for this because that's what people are talking about. So it's, it seems like a cash grab movie because of that. At the same time though, I don't mind and I didn't mind that they did focus on some of the props because some of them are quite cool, some really good set designs for that. But at the back of my mind, I was still thinking, is this only here because you want us to talk about it so we can get more spin-offs? Now we do get some jump scares that are pointless, but again, in this one, you do get some really nice build-up scenes as well involving people within the basement and stuff. So there were some really interesting moments that kept me watching. It wasn't like The Nun where it's just jump scare after jump scare. We do get a story, we do get fleshed out characters, and we do get that backstory as well. So even though we do get some cheap jump scares, I was still happy that we got a mixture of both because I was happy that the people that were getting scared, I cared about them. Now here's one last issue I had with Annabelle comes home, it was sandwiched in between The Conjuring 1 and The Conjuring 2. That's the, where it was set in 1972. So it felt like the movie had no consequences. It's almost like it was a filler movie in the lead up to what's going to come after because we know that Judy's fine. We know that Aidan Lorraine Warren's fine because there's a Conjuring 2. And we also know the history of Annabelle, etc. from previously. So it's sandwiched in between those two movies and that timeline where there was no consequences. There was nothing at stake because whatever happened was going to get fixed and put back in the box for when we lead up later on in the other movies. So it's almost like an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark or Goosebumps where we know there's going to be no consequences simply because it was set in 1972. Overall though, guys, looking at it, for a third movie in the Annabelle series alone within a Conjuring universe, it was decent. They had some ideas, they ran with it, but like I said, they just played with those ideas and just contained it in the very end in the hopes that people will like some of the spin-off ideas that were shown in the movie. So to me, it was like an advertisement for a potential spin-off later on, but still it was a decent film for what it was. A third movie 
in a spin-off franchise within a universe, so you can't really complain, to be honest. So what are your thoughts on Annabelle Comes Home, guys? Did you like it? Was it better than Annabelle Creation? But the biggest question I've got for you is, do you also think the same as me? Do you think the movie felt like it was a setup for more spin-off movies? And if so, what spin-offs would you like to see from what you saw in Annabelle Comes Home? Leave those comments down below, guys. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Get you, Barbara. Ever play Skin the Cat? Ah! Ah! I want to look